even in her lifetime, there was some question of whether or not St. Christina the Astonishing was mad, possessed, or a divinely touched worker of wonders. St. Christina receives attention today for the strange descriptions of her miracles as much as for her faith. St. Christina's story was saved for posterity by the 13th century monk Thomas de Cantimpre. St. Christina was born in 1150 in Belgium, in the county of Loon. After being orphaned at the age of 15, she worked taking the herds to pasture. When she was a young woman, she suffered a severe seizure and was thought dead. Unable to see breathing or hear a heartbeat, those with her pronounced her dead. Soon after, a funeral was held at her local parish. In the middle of the funeral service, she suddenly woke up. Full of energy, she stood right up like nothing had happened. When she realized she was surrounded by a large group of people, she started levitating and flew up to the roof. She stayed there for a long time, and the priest ordered her to come down. At first, she refused. She claimed that she could no longer tolerate being around other people. The stench of sin on them was overpowering to her. She announced that she had returned to offer penance for the souls in purgatory. While she was dead, she saw heaven, hell, and the purgatory. The angels gave her a choice, either remain dead and go to heaven, or return to earth and do penance for those in purgatory. Moved to zeal at the sight of those suffering in purgatory, she chose the latter. The next moment, she came back to life. She told those around her that she returned for the sole purpose of relief to the departed and conversion of sinners. Christina voluntarily lived in extreme poverty, wearing only rags and living without a home. She avoided human contact as much as possible. She was even suspected of being possessed and was jailed. Christina was particularly afflicted by what she believed to be the stench of human sin an odor she found so disagreeable that to escape it, she would leap into treetops or hide inside hot ovens from which she later emerged unscathed. Christina spent much of the rest of her life avoiding others and engaging in a variety of odd behaviors. She liked to roll herself into a ball to pray and she liked to spin. Legend has it that she would hang from the twirling arms of a windmill, yet never be harmed. Her unpredictable behaviors scared her contemporaries, and they would occasionally tie her up. But Christina became renowned for her ability to escape any restraint. For Christina, mere deprivation wasn't enough. She also sought out suffering to increase her penance. People watched her intentionally throw herself into fires and remain there for extended periods of time. She would appear to be suffering greatly with terrible shrieking. 
but then would exit the fire completely unscathed. Public opinion was divided about her. Was she just insane? Was she a holy woman sent to warn people of the fires of purgatory? Or was she perhaps demon-possessed? She was briefly jailed for a second time as well. After being released the second time, she joined a Dominican monastery. Her prioress said that despite her extreme behavior, she was always obedient. Her reputation spread across the region, and both rulers and other holy people sought her out for advice and spiritual aid. Amazingly, despite all of her physical abuse, she died at the ripe old age of 74 of natural causes. Everything just related comes from the life of Christina of St. Trond, written by Dominican scholar Thomas of Cantimpre, eight years after her death from extensive interviews with eyewitnesses. Thomas tells many other stories about Christina, but they all emphasize her characteristic marvels mysticism, visions, and prophecy. In particular, the torments she bore for the suffering souls in purgatory. Although never canonized, Christina is included in Butler's Lives of the Saints and is regarded by some as the patron saint of mental illness. Saint Christina you lived a life of poverty and loneliness in the eyes of others. But you knew that in the eyes of God, you were wealthy and had His love and the companionship of saints and angels. Help us to see beyond the things of the world and to realize we are never alone with God and that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. Pray that we remember to offer up our sufferings for those who do not see beyond the material and who are seeking love and fulfillment, that they may come to know God and realize that they are never alone. Amen.